Hey everybody, it's Craig Syracuse from Walk in Faith. I'm honored to be sitting down with my friend Vinny Levien, who's been on the front line. I know it's been difficult for us even to get in contact, but I've been following you on social media. I've been speaking to your mother just through social media. Tell me, I mean, Vinny, first of all, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know everyone out there wants to thank you. You've been on the front line from day one. What has it been like? I have to say, Craig, you know, you know we go back a long time and, uh, you know, uh, I worked down at Ground Zero for six months and worked at Hurricane Sandy. Uh, I've never experienced or witnessed uh, what I've experienced the past uh, three weeks. It's pretty surreal on uh, seeing New York City literally shut down. You know, the Javits Center sent into a hospital with over 3,000 beds. The U.S. has comfort um, coming in and has another 2,000 beds. Uh, Central Park, you know, it's a pop-up uh, mm -hmm. hospital right now. To see what's going on, I have to say, it's just, it's amazing, Craig, to see and uh, be able to uh, witness, you know, military helicopters uh, landing in New York City. Uh, the, uh, the amount of support, though, uh, I really want to just keep this, uh, this conversation on, on a positive note. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, everybody seeing what's on the news right now, uh, New York City is going through uh, a very, very difficult time. There's thousands of people that have passed away. Unfortunately, thousands of more people that will pass away within the next two weeks because mm -hmm. the apex and the spike is, is hitting so fast and so hard. Uh, what I've seen is uh, the best of uh, people stepping up and a lot of people, you know, have the opportunity to stay home uh, and shelter in place and be there with their families. And I've seen a lot of amazing people that have stepped up and helped in amazing ways. Um, one of them, this guy, Adam uh, from Source Pizza was connected to me by uh, the chain smokers and okay. Boston. I'm Pizza. familiar with them. Yes. And uh, this guy, very successful, five, uh, you know, pizzerias and restaurants in New York city. And uh, he had to lay off some of his staff. And he said, you know, Vin, I want to do something. And if you can provide me a car and a driver, I want to start dropping off pizzas at, uh, you know, hospitals. So we started three weeks ago. He's up to over 7,000 pizzas as of today. 45 hospitals, uh, five departments, um, NYPD police precincts, the Javits Center. And he has one guy that could have stayed home and, you know, collected his, uh, you know, loan from the SBA. And, um, you know, worked with his accountant to get reimbursed for, uh, like, like every other businesses. You walk, you know, I, I drive in New York City every day. 90% of the businesses are closed, yeah. right? And here's a guy that stepped up and said, I want to make a difference. And to see the amazing, amazing work that he's doing and the amazing work that he's helping with these police officers and the firefighters. And, my God, we walk into these hospitals, the doctors and the nurses that work, wait, you know, working 15-hour shifts to see – uh, their effect that they have uh, on just thanking him for mm -hmm. providing a pizza, yeah. right? Uh, a simple, uh, simple act of kindness has now generated from what he started, uh, you know, three weeks ago. It's now all, all over the country. Yeah. Uh, he, he got a lot of media. He was very smart, had a lot of contacts, like, you know, the chain smokers and boss through pizza. And he's media savvy. So he said, you know, Ben, I have to tell the story. I'm like, you know, listen, the best thing we can do is let's get it out to the media. And he's been on, you know, Channel 2 and 4 on Fox and CNN. And because of that, we now have, you know, the COO of Blade Helicopters as one of our drivers, right? Wow. We have you know, CEOs that are saying, you know what? This guy can do this. Instead of me sitting home, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and, you know, and volunteer and help. You said, you said so many interesting things. First of all, you, you, you talked about being on the front line and what it's like to be at home. I could see it in your face that you're physically – mentally exhausted your eyes are glazed over and and i can see the emotional effect that's having on you emotionally i mean i mean yeah. you have a family you know we're not invincible to this i mean we know priest a priest personally we have a lot yeah. of people have been affected that have passed but you've on the first day you stepped up when everybody was home in their covers watching you know cnn or fox news and you were the first person out there delivering pizzas and and on the front line. So that, that I commend you on. And then also you said too about the pizza thing. I have a friend in California that must have seen the article because Social Pizza, he's in uh, Beverly Hills, he's doing the same thing. And you don't have to be, you know, a millionaire. You don't have to be a firefighter. You could just be a guy who owns a pizzeria who just says, I want to use my resources to give back. And that's what he's doing. And he didn't do it because he wanted the publicity. He felt it in his heart. 
to just do God's work like you're doing. I have to give back. I have to do something. And no matter who we are, we all can give back. I've been doing these videos every day in my bedroom. You know, this is a bedroom because this is what I have access to. So, Vinny, I mean, now you walk into these hospitals and I know you're just you're delivering pizza, but it's way more than that. What is it like to be in the hospital, you know, uh, during this pandemic? I mean, what is it like? I have to say, I mean, the love and the care of these doctors and these nurses. I've had, I'm sure like you and you know, being from New York, a lot of people. A lot of personal friends uh, and a lot of friends of friends that uh, their loved ones are sick in the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, about two or three, two weeks ago, the CDC basically said you have to lock down the hospitals. You have to make them. Craig? Yeah. Sorry about that. You would not be able to deal with the situation in which you can go and see your loved one in the hospital. Yeah. Uh, so what these nurses and doctors have been doing is they're you know, calling people like we're doing now on FaceTime and Zoom and having them to, to be able to say goodbye to the loved yeah. ones one last time. Yeah. I mean, think about that. As us, you know, I do a handle the government affairs for the Catholic Church, and we worked years ago uh, to be doing amazing work together. Uh, you know, think about it. You can't have a funeral. You yeah. can't have a wake. Yeah. You know, I was dealing with John Hyde, who's yeah, close to both of us. Room. You know, John, John is working. I was with him today. Uh, the Brooklyn DA's uh, chief of staff's mother passed away. And, uh, you know, she had to have a driver burial yeah. at St. Raymond Cemetery in, in, uh, in, in the Bronx, meaning there was only five cars allowed in. You couldn't get out of the car. John did an amazing job in respecting the family. Their mother passed away, and they have to sit in the car to say goodbye to their mother, and they can't have a, a wake or a funeral. I know. Uh, but I see the amazing work of a guy like John Hire that you know, his father is sick, uh, and his mother's sick, and his sister's sick. Is it NY and this guy's getting up every day, and he's serving. And he's serving in a way that's you know a beautiful thing to watch. You see, as you know, I mean, Catholic Charities, one of the largest Catholic Charities in the country. You know, I got a call, you know, Father Keating, you know, Mr. Senior Harry, he's like, we have no supplies for Catholic Charities. So we were literally going to the Port of Liberty, you know, near where you live, and commandeering a container, putting the container on a truck, following the truck to a warehouse and taking sanitizer and masks and gloves off, you know, um, you know, this truck to get it into Catholic charities uh, and, and to see what Catholic charities do in their food lines. I went to a yeah. food line the other day in Corona, Queens, as you know, Craig, and Corona uh, is a very, very poor neighborhood. There was a line around the block. There was about 500 people waiting for a bag of food because they lost their job. Yeah. So I mean, this is the beautiful work that Catholic charities does. To see, as I, I was, see our friend, Father Jorge, that was literally, sorry, risking his life to, uh, to help people in Bushwick, one of the poorest, poorest neighborhoods in New York City. He could have stayed home, but that guy was out in the streets helping people. And he died for it, 49 years old. You know, we used to joke around, he was the Mexican Santa Claus. <laughs> uh, he died for that, right? Uh, and, and to see... The church, the bishop, you know, the work that he's done, I have to say, Monsignor Harrington, we still, as you know, the technology and the amazing work you did and continue to do for Net TV, we still have Net TV up and running. These reporters are coming in every day. Something that, uh, as you know, is so important to have the ability to tell the story of Christ, to, to, to have a mass. You know, as you know, you can't go to Mass. I know. It's Good Friday. We couldn't go to Mass today. So we're live streaming those Masses, and we're able to do that through Net TV, through the Tablet newspaper. I see, you know, our staff still coming every day, the engineers, the reporters, and they're coming with masks and rubber gloves. And you know Wilfredo Vega, you know, Junior. We have him, and we have an entire team picking up our staff because they can't take Uber, and they can't take a subway. So every day, these guys are working from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., picking up staff so they can, you know, make sure the TV station is running. I mean, Monsignor Harrington did a mass last night, beautiful mass uh, uh, on Holy Thursday, and he had one police officer, one firefighter, one doctor, one nurse to honor them. He couldn't wash their feet. You know, we did a, you know, Holy Thursday mass without washing feet. Uh, so I think you look at what the Catholic Church does on every day. I'm very proud to see the priests on the front line, and you know guys like Mancini Casado that are responding, helping police officers that are mm -hmm. sick, 
and and people that they have a choice to stay home, but their mission their mission is 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 Jesus and and, and God. And here we are on Good Friday. It's an amazing thing to watch. I'm like I'm responding, helping police officers and firefighters. And I'll 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 leave you with this because I, I know you know how busy you are. So every night now, about a few weeks ago, the cops and firefighters. You know, my dad served 45 years. They wanted to do something. So they said, well, you know, what should we do? I said, listen, after 9-11, it was a beautiful thing. They had the Heroes Highway. And every time we left Ground Zero, you would see these thousands of New Yorkers. And, you, you know, New Yorkers are tough, right? They don't say thank you. They don't mm -hmm. clap. Thousands of New Yorkers after 9-11 would be clapping for the firefighters and police officers. So a lot of us said, you know, listen, let's give back. You know, the, the doctors and the nurses are on the front lines. A lot of them didn't have, you know, the medical mask early on and have the protective gear like the firefighters and cops. And let's thank them. Let's go outside of their hospitals at 7 o'clock every night and let's thank them. And I have to say, Craig, I was there last night. I saw him. I saw You know, look at a guy, Ken Langone, who came from nothing, what he's doing for Home Depot, helping thousands and thousands of hospitals. We were outside with the fire trucks and the police officers and the lights and sirens blaring. And it was just clapping, you know, for the, um, the doctors and the nurses that are literally ris risking their life every day to save lives. And a lot of them were going in there without the protective gear, without the N95s, without the face masks. And I saw their faces. And they're like, then, you know, my job is to save lives. I can't stay home. So I'm going in. And, uh, you know, you look at the goodness of that, you know, somebody that is saving somebody else's life that they don't know, putting their loved one on the phone for the final goodbye. You know, the positivity I'll say is there's so much good uh, when a bad thing happens and there's so much love and peace and faith. You know, I, I've been giving out these same Michael the Archangel cards that we made up a few years back to the police officers and the firefighters and the doctors and the nurses and uh, even whatever faith they are, they see that, they know what that means, right? They know mm -hmm. what St. Michael the Archangel means. They know what, um, you know, that means to, to, and they put it in their hat or they put it in their bunker gear or the doctors, they put it in their scrubs. Uh, and I, I, I try and stay positive right now. You know, New Yorkers are very strong. I've seen hundreds of thousands of doctors and nurses now coming in from all over the country, yeah. coming up to JetBlue, staying at the Marriott Hotel, because now JetBlue and the Marriott have said, you know, you come in to save lives, we're gonna give you a free airline ticket, we're gonna give you a free hotel room. How beautiful is that? These people are from Arkansas, and Kansas, and Montana. You know, they see New York on New York City. You know, a lot of them, they're afraid to come to New York, right? Because yeah. New York is a tough place. And these people are risking their lives, because we don't have enough doctors. We don't have enough nurses. I mean, EMT, the FDNY, you know, you know, Vinny, the paramedics. You know, I saw them the other day. We helped donate, you know, 30,000 masks for them. There's not enough paramedics. They've had more calls in the history of the FDNY EMS. They had 9,000 calls one day, 10,000 calls. You know, I saw one guy last night. He came to the Cathedral St. Joseph's. The guy was sleeping in his Jeep because he said, Vin, I don't have time to go home for the five hours. I'm going to sleep in my Jeep and get up and do it again. I mean, that, that's the beautiful thing about what I'm seeing is the love and compassion of the first responders, all the first responders. Mm -hmm. The garbage man is picking up the garbage that is risking his own life. There are, there now, are, this funeral is director, that like John Hoyer, that's mourning the loss of a loved one as his own loved ones are sick. The this priests is, that are going to, to give somebody the last rites and, 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 and they, they know they're putting their own life on the line, but you know, they have to do that. Yeah, this has definitely exposed what the true hero and living a selfless life. And all of that is centered around Christ because, you know, people like you, people like, you know, that we, we would take for granted the guy that delivers my Amazon yeah. packages or, yeah. you know, the people at the grocery store, you just pass that guy. Yeah. And, we, and we, we idolize these celebrities and athletes, and that's been stripped away. And now when the guy delivers my Amazon packages, I know he's got a family. I know he has yep. First thing I do is spray the package because I'm afraid I'm going to get the virus. Yep. He's in a van full of boxes yep. that could be infested. Yep. And the restaurants. Um, yeah, and, and exactly. And I've seen, I mean, every day I get a call or we see emails yep. of people passing. 
And it's yeah. a very hard time, but the fact that you're on the front line doing God's work and these people are doing God's work, risking their lives, it's something that has become so infectious that people are really reconnecting to their faith and really seeing yeah. what the true meaning of life is, which is to live a selfless life. You know, you yeah. mentioned something too, which I was on the phone before doing an interview with a, a pastor from California and they're feeding the homeless. And the homeless now have, haven't been as, uh, you know, in New York, they're really not, we don't hear about it a lot. Yeah. And, you know, people that are on the Catholic charity lines, like you said, they're not all homeless. They're people like you and I that have yeah. lost their jobs and need food. How do people yeah. like donate or how do they get involved? People that are, you know, in the, at the capacity or the ability to donate, how do they get involved and what type of products are you looking for? How do they help you? Well, I think one of the things I, what I've seen, like, for instance, like the churches right now, the Catholic charities, uh, they are now doing these pop-up food centers that show in Corona. They're going to start doing it next week. They're going to start feeding thousands of people throughout New York City. You know, if they're willing, you know, we could use the volunteers. Uh, even like, the, the, like what we're trying to do now is provide the first responders with what they need so they can continue doing their job, saving lives. Uh, you know, the doctors, the nurses, anybody, you know, the, the mask, the N95, the KN95 mask, they're crucial. I have a brother-in-law that's an anesthesiologist. They go through one mask a patient, meaning they have 100 patients. It's 100 masks that they're supposed to be using. How many patients do they see a day? I mean, because so I can, what's the... Right now, the hospitals, the media is not reporting because they're sterile and they're locked down. The hospitals right now are all completely COVID-19. The entire hospital, meaning you're not going in if you have a hip replacement or if you have a you know, kidney transplant or you have a cataract. They've canceled all surgeries. So to answer your question, there's hundreds of thousands of patients that are coming in. You know, you're hearing the people that are dying. The, the amazing success rate is New York has the best hospitals in the world. NYU Langone, New York Cornell, Mount Sinai. I can go on and on. These are the best doctors in the world. They're saving more lives, more lives than the people are dying. You know, if you look at the percentage there in New York, um, so to answer your question, that's why, think about this. You've been to Javits, right? Mm -hmm. You've been to the Javits Center for an auto show or a boat show. Mm -hmm. The auto show you know, goes on right now, right? Easter is that the time thousands of people go to the auto show. I was at the Army Corps of Engineers in FEMA. They set up over 2,000 beds, 2,000 beds at the Javits Center. Are There's they, another 2,000 beds occupied? of comfort. Are the beds are, occupied or are they? Yeah, it, so I was there today. There was 300 occupied and they feel now with the surge, with the, uh, with the spike right now, that all the other hospitals that are overflowing, everybody's gonna be, you know, start coming to, to the Javits Center. So mm -hmm. you think about that, they set up 2,000 beds in you know, five days. Uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, I walked in there, the Army, the Navy, the, 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 the military operation they have, the, the, the logistics that they have to, they changed a convention center into a hospital in five days. It's wow. amazing. It's, it's truly amazing. The Navy, the USS Comfort, that was supposed to be a non-COVID ID hospital, meaning no COVID ID because it's a ship, it's a boat. And the Admiral said, we got to help. And a decision got made four or five days ago that we got to make that COVID ID. And they're putting the sailor's life at risk because they know that they are, their, their mission is to save lives. So that a Navy, Navy boat is now completely 100% COVID ID. The Javits Center with the Army is completely COVID ID. That's 4,000 beds right there. So I think you know, I'm very proud of uh, the work that the first responders have done. Forget about your politics. The governor has actually done a very good job on commanding a lot of the logistical support to get this done. And I think he's shown a true leadership role in, in just helping and getting. I've seen everything here, Craig. I've worked with FEMA. I've seen masks that were supposed to come in. They never showed up. I've seen the front lines, as we know, with the NYPD, firefighters and doctors. They didn't have the mask until recently. Uh, and that was the bureaucratic dealing with, you know, the federal government, the city and the state. I, I'm happy to see the president and the governor are now working together as a team. I think, you know, you look at the politics here. Nobody expected this to be a national issue that they had to respond to all at once. Yeah. We've never experienced this before. Like we, as you know, we worked together after Hurricane Sandy. Yeah. That was an isolated case. That was New York, New Jersey. This is throughout the United States. I'm on calls and like Ben, New Orleans is spiking, Miami spiking, LA is spiking, San Francisco is spiking. I mean, thinking about responding to the United States all at once and having 10 cities 
within 10 states that are having the same issue. The logistics, the procurement is mind boggling. That's why you see now I'm at JFK meeting with the U.S. Customs because we're getting the, the, the vital shipments coming in for the doctors and the nurses and the first responders. I'm literally at JFK because I get an order and say, Vin, we got to get this off the plane. The plane lands and we're expediting it through customs. The customs are doing an amazing job. We're putting that shipment on a truck so we can get that truck into New York City. But I go to JFK, there's no passenger flights. There's 150 cargo planes that landed and there's 500 trucks waiting to get that cargo off planes. So, I mean, I'm, I have to say, I worked down at Ground Zero, worked at Hurricane Sandy, my background, I worked in government, did White House advance. My biggest issue uh, is my family. You know, I get up every morning, my wife is like, Ben, why can't you stay home? I know. I have I'm a six-year-old and eight-year-old. Aren't you worried and, uh, you know, about your own health? I mean, you, you have, I mean, obviously your family's there, aren't Like, what do you... I yeah, mean, I, I mean, I, I, I have pre-existing conditions working down at Ground Zero. You know, I have acid reflux and chronic sinus infection. I'm on, thank God, I have a great doctor through, through somebody that I've known that I've, I'm on medicine for you know, platonics and, and a cough, you know, that I've had since 9-11. Um, I'm under doctor's care. I'm, I'm being very careful. I wear a mask or wear the gloves, but you know, it's a real risk. You know, my, my wife, as you know, you met Bridget a long, you know, many times, you know, she's got two kids and she's like, Vin, you know, you leave here, you get sick. You might not come home. Yeah. Uh, and that's a real, I get home. I take off all my clothes. You know, I put them, I put them in the, uh, the laundry. We have a protocol. We do everybody that's working with me, you know, Wilfredo Vega and, uh, Robert Lynch, the former NYPD detective that's working with me, we lice all the car. We Clorox the car. We scrub it down. We scrub down our clothes. You know, we do everything else to protect ourselves, not to get a virus that could kill us. Um, you know, but I, I, I made it, you know, my mission, you know, because I, I have unique skills. And I said to myself, you know, when this happens, you know, I need, I need to step up and do what I can. I have a, God, I, I have a God's gift, I think, that I've... I have unique logistical uh, expertise that I, I can help people in the time of crisis. And because of my work with the Catholic Church, thanks to Bishop DiMazio and Senior Harrington, they've given me the full ability to use all my resources to bring up, bring on an emergency task force that we're working night and day. And a total of now eight people that are literally working seven days a week to help people. And you know, what's, what's great about us is we, we work for the Catholic Church. I'm not answering to the governor or to the mayor or to FEMA. You know, we're helping them. I'm, I'm doing whatever I can to help them. But, you know, I'm answering to, uh, to uh, a higher authority. So, and so because you. of that, you know, I believe in my faith. You know, I'm speaking to you on Good Friday that, you know, mm -hmm. I'm in God's hands. And uh, I hope and pray I don't get sick. Nobody in my team gets sick. But that's every day. I got tested. Thank God I came up negative. Wilfredo got tested. Uh, you know, we're being very careful. Because, God forbid, I don't want to take this home to my family, to my wife, to my kids, mm -hmm. and then subject to other people. Like, I'm on the front lines dealing with doctors and nurses and firefighters and police officers. The last thing I want to do is sub subject them to something that I have. So we're being very careful, but we also know the risk. Yeah. Uh, but I think the risk uh, outweighs uh, right now anything because I think that's, to me, you have a mission, Craig. You wake up, you do it every day. Matina Harrington has a mission. Bishop DiMaggio has a mission, and Cena Casado and everybody that you know has a mission. And this is my mission. If, if, I, if I stay home, who shows up? Mm -hmm. You're right. I mean, what you're doing is it's, we all have different missions. God, you know, we all have different plans. God has different plans for our lives. What you're doing is really, it's amazing. It's God's work. It's inspiring. You know, we should all do our own part. And I know, like you said, you have a family and it's, you know, even when I go to the store, I, I worry about my health and, you know, yeah. I'm at coming home and I'm concerned and you're actually out on the front line. You know, I know your family is proud. I know your mom and your wife, you know, and I, I know your father's looking down on you. If your father was here, what do you think he would say to you about, you know, about the work that you're doing? Um, I think he'd be proud. You know, my brother's a colonel in the army right now stationed at Ramstein Air Force Base. My dad dedicated his life 45 years in law enforcement. I think he'd be proud and he'd be proud that he, he, uh, he raised me and my brother the right way. And, 
you know, he, he was Marine and he used to live by Semper Fidelis, always faithful. And I think because of that, me and my brother got that as a, at a very young age. And it's all we know. You know, we can't, we don't have an ability to stand down. We step up and help when we can. Well, I'm very proud of you, my friend. I love you. I'm going to pray for you. And just be careful. And God bless you. Thank you, brother. God bless. Thank you, Craig. God Thank bless you. you. Bye -bye. Take care.